All right, welcome back, guys. We're talking conditional probability and independence. So we talked a little bit about independence uh, before, but that's the likelihood of an event happening given that other circumstances are happening. So you've got two groups, right? And if they, if a subset of one of the groups, and we've done an example like this before, a subset of one of those groups, um, if they're if there's a different likelihood of an outcome given that a certain characteristic, then they're not independent. But if they're equally likely whether or not something else happened, then they are independent. This kind of leads us into to more about conditional probability. I'm going to divide this box in half here, and we're going to talk today about the general multiplication rule. And the general multiplication rule looks like this. The probability of A and B happening together looks like this. It's the probability of A times the probability of B given that A. So we put a little quantifier on that. And this particular part of the equation is our conditional probability. Okay. And so this leads us to our discussion about independence. So a little note here, if a and B are independent, okay, then the probability of B given that A is equal to the probability of B, meaning if they're independent, then there's no, it, it, it's not, it's not depending on something. And so you're given that is just the probability of B. And so that would mean that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Hopefully your head's not spinning, uh, not spinning right now. Let's do, let's look at a couple of um, little intricacies about this, and then we're going to do an example, and I think you're going to see how this plays out. And so one of the ways that we do conditional probability is we lay out tree diagrams. And tree diagrams are awesome because they help you map out all of the conditions that could possibly happen. In this particular case, we're going to have two goings on. And so what's going to happen is a tree diagram helps us split into what ifs. And so on the upstroke here, this is going to be the probability of A. So you're, you're standing at a juncture, right? So let's say you're flipping a coin and two, one, only one of two things could happen. Either you have a heads or a tails. And so either you get the probability of A happening, so, so heads, or the probability of, in this case, not heads, so not A, goes the other way. So in this case, it would be heads or tails, but I'm going to do A and A complement because we're not necessarily talking about just flipping a coin. And so then from there, you have this case where you're, you're then going to do another event. And so up here, A happens. So the probability of A happening, and we follow A hat. The probability that A happens, and then A happens. So this marks an event. Well, down here is where A complement happened because you follow the tree diagram. I, you were here, and you flipped the coin, and you got a heads. You flipped the coin, you got not heads. Well, from there, we're going to do another event, and so this is going to split into two things as well. And this is the probability that B happens given that A happens, and this part, this particular part right here, given that A, is because you're on this upstroke here. So A happened, then B happened, which is the probability that B happened, given that A already happened. And so down on the downstroke here, this is the probability that C happened, given that A happened already. And once again, this probability that A happened, you're already up there. So everything on this top side of our tree uh, is going to have this given that A happened. Everything on the bottom side of the tree is going to have given that A complement happened. Why? Because we follow down to A complement happening. So we split this into two rows or into two, two branches. So up here is the probability that B happened given that A complement happened. And down here is the probability that uh, B C happened given that A complement happened. And once again, check it out. Complement, complement, because the complement is what happened here. I need to, I probably should clean this up just a little bit for you guys because I don't want you to think, uh, get confused here. Let me move my, let me move my A complement down. 
probability of B given that A complement. Okay, there we go. Sorry, guys, it's getting kind of tiny there. Well, what is the next? So this is that A happened. This is that A complement happened. Well, up here, here's B happened. Here is C happened. Here is B happened. Here is C happened. Well, Mr. Saris, but why are why is this B here and this B here? Ah, remember, there are two, there are two subsequent events. So A happened and then B happened. A happened and then C happened. Not A happened, but B still happened. Not A happened, but C still happened. And so what is the point of this? Well, you know, you have these two probabilities here, probability of A and then probability of B given that A. And what you do is you multiply those probabilities to give yourself an answer. That is the probability of A and B happening. And so you'd multiply those to get the probability of A happening and B happening. Well, this works and this is pretty cool because your, your tree diagram helps you map out a sequence of events. Well, when I get to the end of this rung here, right, what am I looking at? Well, this is the probability that A happened and C happened. How did I get there? Well, I'd multiply the probability of A happening times the probability of C happening given that A already happened. Down below here, as you could probably fill this in, right? So this is the probability that I can't write in highlighter. That's just silly. This is the probability that B happened given that or and A happened or a, com a complement happened and B happened. So what does that look like? Well, this probability is the fact that A complement happened and then B happened. So you multiply those two events together. Down at the very bottom here, this is the probability that A complement happened and C happened. So how many times have I said the word happened? A lot. So A complement, then C. That's how a tree diagram works. And so you're gonna be doing a lot of multiplying here uh, of those. And here's the cool thing. At the end of this tree diagram, all of these probabilities are going to add to one because that is every possibility of something that could happen. Uh, so you've got a probability of, uh, you know, A and B, A and C, A not, not A and B, not A and C add up to one. Uh, a caveat here uh, on the side is a lot of times in statistics, they're going to ask you this kind of probability. The probability of at least uh, one thing happening. So think about it like this. Let's say you flip a, a coin four times, uh, sub, uh, you know, subsequent times. And what's the probability that you get at least one head? Well, there's a lot of ways to get at least one head. You can get one in any of the four spots, two, but then it could be the first two or the second two, you know, and then three and then four. So when we talk about at least one, a lot of times what we'll do is one minus the probability of none happening. And that's kind of a notion about complementary events, right? So the probability of none happening and one minus that would be everything minus the probability that the only way that didn't work happened. Let's look down here and, and apply this to an example. Again, with a check your understanding, as always, good to pause it here, try on your own, and then come back and watch the explanation. But I'm going to keep rolling through. So if you want to pause here, please do. If not, then we will, uh, then you'll just get the full explanation this way. So in the 2016 election, 30 states went to the Republican candidate and 20 states went to the Democratic candidate. Of the 30 states that went Republican, 29 of those 30 were in the continental U.S., implication being one of the 30 was not in the continental U.S. And of the 20 Democratic states, 19 were in the continental U.S., implication there being one of the 20 was not in the continental U.S. And then we select one state at random. So here we sit with our states, and they want us to construct construct a tree diagram to model this chance process. So here we have all the states. So here are 50 states. And we're going to pick one. They're asking what could happen. So what are the options? Well, I how many options do I have at the end? I'm either going to have a Democratic state or a Republican state that's in the continental U.S. or not. And so at the end, I'm going to have four branches at the end that are going to be Republican continental, Republican not continental, Democratic continental, Democratic not con continental. Let's construct a tree diagram. And so one of the ways that we go ends up that we picked a state that's Republican. And the other way would be that it was Democratic. 
What's the probability that it was a Republican state from the original 50 states? Well, 30 of the 50 were Republican. And that means that 20 of the 50 were Democratic, which that is supported up here, right? So 20 uh, and, sorry, 20 and 30. So from there, I have Republican states, and it could either be in the continental U.S. or not continental. I could have continental U.S. for my Democratic state, or I could have not continental U.S. And on those lines are going to go my probabilities of those particular things happening. So how many of them were, uh, how many of the Republican states were in the continental U.S.? Well, that was uh, 29 of the 30. And then one of the 30 was not continental in, on the Democratic side. 19 of the 20 were in the continental U.S. And one of the 20 was not in the continental U.S. And so at the end of these branches, and this is why the tree diagram is so important, Really, I'm picking two things. It seems like I'm only picking one thing because I'm picking one state. Well, it's either a Democratic or Republican state. Well, really, the question is, what kind of state am I picking? Is it Democratic or Republican? Is it continental or not? And so at the end of these branches is going to go the product of our probabilities to get there. So the probability that I pick um, a Republican state that is continental is going to be... 30 over 50, which is the probability that was Republican, and then 29 over 30, that it was Continental. And so I'd have 29 over 50, which is equal to uh, 58%. Okay? Here I'd have Republican non-Continental. Well, my product there would be 30 over 50. I should zoom in on this. It'd be 30 over 50 times one over 30. And I cross out those and I get one over 50. So only a 4% chance there, sorry, a 2% chance. And so then I have Democratic. And continental, that would be 20 over 50 times 19 over 20. Again, crossing out, I get 19 over 50. And down here would be democratic and non-continental. 20 over 50 times 1 over 20 would give me one over 50. So then, now that's all the possibilities, right? So that's the probability of Republican continental, Republican non-continental, we'll check it out here. If I highlight this, and I'm, I know it's kind of messy, but check it out, 29 over 50, one over 50, 19 over 50, one over 50. Check it out, what's my sum there? Well, I'd have one, two fiftieths, um, and then this would be 48 fiftieths, so I have 50 out of 50. So all states are accounted for. So 50 of the 50 states fall into one of those four categories. So then when it asks me to find the probability that a randomly selected state is in the continental U.S. and went Republican, those two things, and the and is the key here, right? So the and is the key, meaning that's where I got my multiplication. So Republican and continental would be this branch over here, which is 29 over 50, which is equal to 0.58. Okay, and I really, I really don't want to have a naked answer here, I meaning I don't just want to put my numerical answer. So I want to say uh, the probability of Republican and Continental, okay, is equal to 29 over 50, which is 0.58. So if we selected four states at random with replacement, meaning we don't take one out and then there's only 49 in the pot, take another one out, there's only 48, meaning we take one out, we put it back. We take one out, we put it back. And so what is the probability at, that at least one of the states was in the continental U.S. and went Republican? So anytime you see the probability of at least one, I want you to write equal to one minus the probability of 
none. And what I mean by that is every time you see the probability of at least one, I want you to literally write one minus the probability of none. Well, if I have one minus the probability of none, what is none are continental U.S. and went Republican? Well, the probability of continental U.S. and went Republican is 0.58. So this is the complement to the probability of complement is equal to 1 minus 0.58, which is 0.42. So there's a 42%, if there's a 58% chance that it was continental and Republican, there's a 42% chance that it was not Republican and continental. And so what we do here is we say, here's the complement, not Republican, continental. And I'd raise it to the fourth power because there's four replacements there. So there's four times that I picked it. And so this would give me 0.9689. So there's a there's a 96.9% chance uh, that, the, that the probability that at least one of them is in the U.S. continental U.S. and went Republican. So given that a randomly selected state is not in the continental U.S., what's the probability that went Republican? So this is the probability of Republican and not in continental U.S., is equal to, well, so it was not in the continental US. So remember, the given that goes on bottom. So not in the continental US was one out of 50 and one out of 50. One out of 50 plus one out of 50. And uh, given that it was Republican, so Republican given that, so this is the probability of Republican given that not in Kant US, uh, that would be equal to one out of 50. So I have uh, one out of 50 over uh, two out of 50, which is equal to uh, 50%. So there's a 50% chance that the state was Republican, given that it was not in the continental US. And as a reminder, that formula looks like this, the probability of A given that B is equal to the probability of A and B over the probability of B, meaning you, you determine that denominator first. So the probability of B, meaning in this case, not in the continental US, uh, that was two out, of the two out of the 50 states. And then the probability of it were pub being Republican, given that that was true, goes on top, okay? So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, the best way to get better at problems involving probability is to do problems involving probability. So thanks for watching and we will see you next time.